Good day, everyone. Welcome to the uh, four o'clock from instead of three o'clock session of uh, today's demos. <clears throat> I'm going to go through uh, some of this collage that I'm doing. Um, you can see it's just a little bit of a, a mess in front of you, but um, I will go through what I'm doing and um, oops, turn it around. There we go. And uh, you'll know uh, what I mean when I'm starting to talk about things. So i move all the paper over. I had it, I don't know if you remember, but I had it rolled up in the uh, the applique mat. Hi, Rado. So um, I can see a few people popping on now. That's the drawing and that's the black and white version there. And you've got the colour version. Let me get the paper to behave. There we go. It's because I've had it wound up. So the drawing version that actually goes underneath so it won't move under the plastic and I did take this off because I had to use my mat the other day so I'm just going to slide that up to where it should be um, and the one thing I haven't got is my tweezers so I think they are on the long arm well, they're in there somewhere so I've got them hi Pat I uh, just got home from neighborhood center great greetings Annie hi Jill so I've got that sitting there back where I had it my iron is on and ready to go I have a little bit more um, that's my dog barking because I don't know who that is it's just driven in the driveway um, I have some Applic um, tilde fix so it's a fusible webbing would you like to shut the door dot just the noise of the dogs this is the tilde fix that's come off because of the ironing so that's not too much of a big deal we're just going to slide it under a bit um, this one here yeah i have been um, michelle i'm just about buggered lovey just about done it for the day that one goes on there so you see where it sits just like that um you can get pins and you can just place them in like i've got pins there and that just hi helen how are you that just places that down there i just pop a pin in just to hold it in position for me so i know what i'm doing um, while we were off air um, last week or the week before, I think it might have been, I did a little bit more of it. I think actually I might have got um, uh, oh, uh, Mary to do it for me. So um, just to catch up on, so I can get a little bit ahead of myself a bit. Okay. Um, then, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim this into two pieces, so two or three even. So I'm cutting along a line that I think will be appropriate for me to do. I'm going to try and keep this video around about the half an hour to 40 minutes max, so it doesn't go too long. Um, and I'm just sticking that up there just to keep it in one spot. There we go. This one's going to go right here. Um, and because I moved it off the applique mat, it's moved a little. So I'm just going to reposition things a bit and chuck my iron on it and stick it back down on the mat. Bear with me while I get it to sit where it needs to go. And then it'll stop moving around and jumping out of place. That's the beauty of these mats. They, they're designed to keep your project in one place. You can stick things down to them and peel them off if, uh, as you need to. So I like using them. Okay, 
So I'm getting down to the nitty and gritties. They're really tiny little pieces. You can see um, lots of little ones. So I'm actually going to um, just move the mat over a fraction. My picture did move, but that's okay. I can pop it back under. And I'm going to use this side of the, the mat. Just take the pin out of the way. Because I'm going to try and stick this together in one piece here. Oh, you love yours, Julianne. They're good, aren't they? They're a great mat. Um, I couldn't do this without it, to be honest. I find, um, although you can use, you know, um, different types of... Um, freezer paper and stuff like that I mean it's good to have freezer paper and and the tear away um, fusible paper but they sort of only go so far you do need some sort of mat to stick them onto so you're just going to hear someone come in this the girls are still working in the background so because that does have a little bit of tack to it, I can stick that down there. And I know this is the first piece I'm going to work on. Okay. So I've cut it into another piece and I'm going to now cut these as well. And looking at it, I can see that I need to cut across here. And you don't have to be exactly on the lines. If you come off the line, it's no big deal. No one's going to know the difference once you take the paper away. So we're going to have that one. I'm actually just using my, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, the tweezers from the um, overlooker. <laughs> I couldn't find my other ones. So um, then I'm going to cut this one into its three pieces. So we've got one and then two and three. It's going to be very skinny. Is it focused? Yeah, it has. So that one there. One, two, and three, and I'm going to press them onto this mat just so they're in their order, one, two, and three. If I don't press it down there, um, I'll forget which one comes first because they're all going to pretty much slip into side each other. So, you, you know, there's not enough difference between one one piece and the next to, to be able to distinguish. So that's why I'm going one, two, three. So I'm going to work on this one first. I know it goes over here, so it's going to have a flat edge there and I'm going to have a little lip on this side, on the fabric, so that this can go over here. All right. Now it's colour choice. So colours will decide. I decide by going, okay, well, I look at my, my photo. I'll just wind it back the other way. Sorry about the crunching. It's just that uh, if I don't do that, it's going to curl up all the time. So I'm doing these areas here. So I've done up to up to this. This one here is going to be the lightest. Then it's a little bit darker, not much, and then a little bit darker again. Okay. So oh, there's my other tweezers. There they are. I've got two now. So I've got my fabrics here at the side. My lightest colour is this one. So that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to grab this and iron it onto there. Like that. So it's ironed on. I'm going to just quickly cut that roughly. that aside and then I'm going to grab some blizer fix now I can use my little bits and pieces off the side here which is you know handy to have um, I can pop that underneath just tear off a little bit more and pop it under this side and 
just using tweezies, just tuck her under. As long as I cover that piece of paper, I'm fine. So you can just see that in the picture. There we go. Then pick it up. And we're going to trim. Give it about a quarter inch on that side. Um, a dot. Yeah. It's Julie, can you stop, love? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I've just got to stop Julie from reaching over above her self and grabbing something heavy and high up. Um, and I'm going to cut on this side. So you'll hear them, hear the girls. They'll be in the background. Don't sort of freak out thinking, what the hell is that noise? That's just the girls working away because they've been very busy today helping me out and working. And Julie's just popped in. Hello. <laughs> there she goes. Hello. <laughs> Dottie's in the background. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so the next one I'm going to use is this one. Now, you might look at it and go, oh, my God, that's got so much colour in it, blah, blah, blah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this part. It's a little bit darker than that, so I'm actually going to do a little bit of fussy. Um, but to, I need to know the size. So just grabbing that, popping it on here. And this is why batiks are so amazing because you can fussy cut so many different variations of it from one piece of fabric. Um, there's that one. So I'm just going to glue that down again because it's come away a bit. Uh, Julianne said hello ladies, hello, ladies. <laughs> that's going to go against that one so this side here needs to be really flat against this piece of paper and this side needs to have a lot, about an eighth or a quarter of an inch edge so that it can lay over um, before I do that though I'm going to just put that up there just out of my way a little and stick it back down because that's what we do that's how I roll. Then I'm going to get some more of this tilde fix from here because that's not going to be used, like I said before. And just going to tear it. I'm going to place it under here. When the pieces get small, my fingers do not work at all. It's like I'm disabled in some way with my fingers. Um, they just don't work. It's like I'm useless so there we go hey yeah they yeah my fingers just don't want to they don't want to pick it up they're just too bulky my fingers are too fat i think i'm not at the moment i don't have nails because i've got you know i'm supposed to be i actually made appointment for um the nail tech and not the nail tech the uh, eyebrow lady and stuff and i've been messaged today that i cannot have that done oh. they're closed still Hmm. Hmm. It is. All right, so this side, remembering, it goes up against that. So we want this edge of it tight against the paper. Get rid of that little bit. And this side, we're going to just come out there and give ourselves about an eighth of an inch overlap. And that can go up there. So there's. So that's the little piece there. Then I get it and I lay it next to this one. And I'll bring this closer again. Okay, and match it up with the one next to it the best I can. Hang on to it and place the iron on. 
then we do the next one, which is this one. So we grab that. Yeah, no, it's going to break. I need a darker one again. So we're going to use this colour. So I find a bit that I've already cut off, which I don't think I've got yet. Grab this. Grab this little piece. Iron it down to keep it still. Rough cut around it. I've got some, I need to actually, a little bit more heat. Did put a little bit of tilde fix there, but might not be enough down the bottom. So I'll put a little bit more. I'll get it. Oh, I don't know, I'm feeling behind it and it feels pretty tacky, so I might be able to get away with that. We'll soon find out. So this side I need to leave that one eighth. Don't try and cut inside those, it's just way too hard. And close up against the left hand side. Oh yeah. Hello, happy. <laughs> happy Jack. <laughs> Loving this. Yeah, we'll go for about half an hour, 40 minutes. It does take a long time. It is a slow, slow process. Um, it's a real cut and paste, a jigsaw puzzle. Um, pop that down next to the previous one, lining it up best you can. And place it like that. And what happens then, you've got the three, if I have enough heat, joined together as a one piece. Off topic, but is felt okay to practice free motion quilting on instead of sandwiches, please? Uh, look, it's okay. It's probably a dearer way to do it. A calico and, um, you know, a cheap wadding like a poly would be probably cheaper. Uh, there's no reason why you can't do the way you're, you're saying. Um, but, yeah, it's probably a dearer way because the squares are smaller and, you know, you'll, yeah... So that's the next one to go on there, up there. So I'm going to cut this little piece in half. I'm just going to pop that up there. We'll cut on that little line there, I should say. And so I don't lose that little fella, I'm just going to glue it up there with a bit of heat. Okay. So it just holds it in place. Then we know we've got this one to do. And having a look at my picture again, it seems like... Um, I just place that up there that seems like it's this light past here so I'm, I'm actually going to grab some more light fabric I'm thinking it's under the eye probably um, where the light hits it so we'll pop this onto here just on the corner if you notice I'm not using a white I can always highlight with thread um, with this one that's it there I did have a piece of that sorry I turn it around um, this down there tuck it under I don't know if you can see that I need to be able to move up a little just tuck it under there glue that down Pick it up and remember which way it's facing. It's going to face that way. So we need to cut very close to the edge, basically from here all the way around to here and then leave an edge on that side. Okay. Just because I know it's got to go against all this and there's a lip. And then over here, it's got the edge there for it to go against. So we'll give this one a it's lip first. And a 
against the edge for the rest of the way. So this is really, really relaxing to, to, to do, I should say. Um, I find that I, I used to do a lot of it in front of the TV at night um, because I can sort of zone out. Oops, the day's nearly cut that off. can sort of zone out. Oh, no, I need to. Um, on the, you know, not really listening to the TV. It's just a background noise. All right, so that one, no paper because we've just attached it as is. That's going to go there. Now I can see if I don't lift that there, that bit of paper on this one, it's going to stick to the paper and that is going to be a nuisance. So we get the tweezies because it's so tawny. A bit of a crunch, if I can get that off. My little bugger. Thankfully, I have my glasses on today because without my glasses, I wouldn't see this. I have a poly felt on a roller meter wire from crafts, Kids Craft. Not good like the stuff in the bag kits as well. Yeah, there you can use that. Why not? Why not? If it's just for practicing on, I just thought you meant as in like wool, like really expensive wool felt squares all right I think I've got it there all right so that's a bit of the paper still on there my fingers aren't working there we go so just folding that back Put that up there place that there like that Grab the iron and stick it down. Then if you want to, you can pop that back down if you like. It doesn't really matter. Then we've got this little fella, and that's going to be a bit of a shadow. I'm pretty sure it's up in there. So it goes on there. So it's going to be a little bit darker. So we go the next colour up. Oh, I don't know. I had some off-cut. Here we go. It's got glue on it or not. I think it has. So that can just go there. And put that away now. And then we just need a bit of this. Oops, it has. I haven't got that enough. Put that behind that little picture. Yes, it's really starting to take shape now. You would you remember when we first started, it was quite, um, you know, quite un, unattractive looking. So it's now really starting to take shape. So these are all, this one here goes up in there. So you can see I've got an edge on there. So that can be all cut close to, oh, I think it might be that one actually, close to the, um, the edge of the paper and right up to there but this little bit here I'm not going to cut that off I'm going to leave a lip because that's going to go underneath there so I'll lift this little darling up and get a hold of it there we are that goes underneath like that no Michelle um I started this a few like a good month or so ago and no I didn't so um, I actually draw these from the actual picture and I do them manually so no I don't actually have a program that does that I go the old school way um, I know there are programs out there I wouldn't know how to use them though um, believe it or not I'm still old school so um, now I'll show you, Michelle, there's the drawing in black and white. I've drawn the lines, turned it over, redrawn on top of that because it shows through and that's my um, design and that's what I use. 
Um, I then trace it with a, um, a fusible, um, what do they call it? Um, oh, God, what do they call it? Fusible tearaway or even um, freezer paper, that sort of thing. And that um, just sticks to the, uh, the, the fabric for enough for me to be able to get it the shape right. So this has just got to go back under. Bear with me. I'll just pop that under there. All right, so that there, this one here is going to sit right there. So it, you can see it's not going to quite line up, but once I take this away, lift that up. All right, take that little bit away. Just fold it up there, out of the way. And I pop that there. I can see I've got a little bit of a gap there. So I'm going to move it over a little. And it seems like it's too high there. Um, that could be very well. Yeah, because there's a piece that needs to go in there. Okay. There you go. And so if, I must give it a try learning so much from you in your live sessions. Oh, good. So I'm just going to pin that one uh, back a bit so the reason why that's not matching up is because there's a piece that's got to go there and if I had to try to you know fiddle around and make it fit in then I would have come to this and gone oh my god I've just sort of stuffed myself up because I've I've jumped ahead and not thought and double checked so that sits level with here now I'm looking at that piece of paper that it's got to go up against and I'm just going to give that a bit of a trim because I want a nice line there like that it's going to go up like that just up into that point up there make sure that's down then I need to have come from the other side with the iron so oops it is and down there and I haven't gone right up to here because I need to lift that bit of paper and it's just enough to hold it then I need to pick this bit of paper up um, it's got caught on a couple of things, so we're just going to give it a bit of encouragement. And grab that there, tear it off. Take that out. I'll give them an iron in a minute and they'll sit nicely. Just take that off there. Nice and gentle because it has lifted a couple of times. Give that a trim, it's pulled as it's gone. I'm going to stick these little bits down. They seem to have moved over here. Once I start sewing, they, they'll be sewn right down and, and you won't you won't see any of them moving. So this one here, I can see by looking at it, it needs to sort of come up in that angle. So I'm just gonna give it a little trim. Just because I want it to play nice. Okay. So that one goes there. Then the face of the horse is going to go there, which is going to be the next one we do. I've got to remember to make this one a little bit bigger just to match up here. Okay. Because I can see there's a bit of a gap. You probably can't see because my hand's in the way. But up there... Move this picture down. See how the picture doesn't move unless I move it. <laughs> but no chance of that picture moving under this rubber. Latexy stuff or whatever it is, silicon stuff. Alright, there we go. I think that's about right. So up here, if I put this down. 
that's got a sit in there like that I've got a bit of a gap you can see how it's not filling in that area there so either a piece has gone missing or you know it's just um something that uh, I need to to fix up so I'll just touch the get that zoomed in there sorry my bad let me go try again zoom in there all right I think it's about as far in as I can go without giving you a picture of my wrinkly neck so you can see too it's not up here far enough and there go the dogs actually it might only need to be made a little bit higher so I can see by looking here I'm going to have a bit of an issue getting it to sit nicely in there and that's because the reason for this is that every time I add fabric upon fabric, it makes it a little bit bigger. So this is where you need to get a little bit creative and ad lib. So looking at this, I know that that's one piece all the way up there. Okay, I can see that one big piece. And there's a hair there. Um, so I can cut that one away there and when it comes to doing these ones I can make them a little bit bigger I don't know if you can see those up there so I'm going to do that I'm just going to cut those out because the next part I'm going to do is that really complex little bit in there and that is the complex part leave the, the, the hardest to last All right, so theoretically that would sit there, but you can see because that's higher than it should be, it's not going to sit where it needs to be. So we're going to move this over here out of our way, move the mat over, zoom back out for you, iron that baby down, and we're going to work on this bit now. Don't forget the way it went in, like that. So when you're going to work with it, you want to remember how it lays down. So only cut off a piece at a time. So we go across here and we'll cut this bit off here. And keep that there in position so we know it's not going anywhere. Then we've got this one and again I am going to cut this one off. Now I know that this one goes all the way up in there. Okay, but I also know I've got a gap here. So when it comes to placing this down before I actually do, I need to fill that gap up. Okay, so that one, that one comes off there like that. So we got that up under there, that one up there. So let's do this one first. I'll just press them down. Just to hold them in place. And I'll get do this one and that little, little gap there that I had before. And um, we'll call it for a day. And uh, we'll do some more over the next few days. Because I want to get this one stitching. Alright, so this one's going to go here. And we're going to fill up that gap. Okay, because the one that comes after it comes out in here. That gap will be blank. So that there, by looking at the picture, I can see it's right under the eye. Okay, right there. So it needs to be that, that darker bit there. And I think I need to make it that fraction a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab this really amazing fabric. And I have so many versions of one color in this it's amazing so let's grab a really dark piece like that just iron it i've got a little bit of uh tilde fix behind it look at that nice just give a rough cut now to be clever 
I'm going to cut the top to save myself some hassle and I'm going to trim that side down there. Now I know that's really light so I don't want to have too much there and I need to make that rounded to make it fit and I need to lift this baby off there okay because I want it to go under this one but I don't want all that there it's going to be way too much dark underneath that so I'm going to cut a lot of it away and just fiddle with it all right so I know if I put that there and it comes to this next piece over here I'm just grabbing it that's going to sit where is that one there there it's got covered up in there and I'm thinking that is going to sit the way it should, almost should. So let's see if we can get a little bit more in there. I might just trim that top bit like this. See if we can make it like a, a bit of a scissor thing so that comes on top, that one underneath. Like that. Tuck that under there. And I'll get this little piece here. And just plop it under there. Bit of surgery here. I wouldn't be a very good microsurgeon, I can tell you. So that needs to be stuck down. Okay, so I'm just sticking that down and that should take up that little bit of space that we had a bit of a gap without making it look like I've seriously just added in something that shouldn't be there. And then it goes sort of like that. Oh. That one there. Sorry, I'm just having a bit of a fight with it. There we go. So... This one off because that's fighting me. I can go back over there. It's this one here. So maybe we cut that from. Look at that. There we go. There it is. Like that. So we've sort of fixed that without making too much of a mess. All right. So that's going to be our next piece and we are going to do this in lots of little pieces and that's because it does take a long time. If I rush, um, I'm going to make mistakes. All right, so let's go, um, let's finish up for the day. I know where that finishes there. I can pop a pin in it if I want to or I can um, pop it back over with this one and clip them all together over there and uh, we can move on to the next bit but you can see the front of the horse is starting to really really take shape i'll just get rid of that bit of paper that one there can go away and you can see the iron leaves a mark because i haven't had an iron cover on mine and i should have just bought one 
Oops, I'm peeling off the wrong thing. Might have to start in a different spot. Just put that back down, otherwise I'll fray it. And because this won't get washed, the glue will always stay to help the stitching on the fiddly bits. Absolutely. And you can re-iron it over and over again. I mean, you don't, you don't have to iron it once a go well, and I can't touch it again with an iron but um, this one here I really want it to go um, it's half the paper alrighty there we go we're under so you want to lift that like that and like that there we go that one can be lifted and get it to lift there we go all right so that one i will actually tear away to about there those big ones can come off now if you have any little gaps anywhere or anything like that this is where, when we finish, we will hold it up and have a look at it before we put it on our background fabric. Okay, and then I'll show you what we do. I'm just going to stick this all back down because otherwise it will fluff around and get caught. All right. So, I really need that tidied up. Nice, neat edge. There we go. Okie doke. So we are up to those next little pieces there. And I've just lost my spot there. And then this one that goes in there. Okay. So that's where we're up to next. And then after that, we've just got his forehead and goes from about here all right so we're not far we're not far from finishing and not far from getting it to the machine um, if I get a chance which I doubt I will but if I get a chance in between I might get that front all those little bits done before we come back next time but um, I'll uh, I'll let you know how we go it's all good either way it's all learning and it's all fun so thank you again for joining me appreciate the time you spend coming to sit with me and um, watch me sew and fiddle with little bits of fabric um, I hope you are making something of your own that's just as spectacular if not more so and um, I look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow thank you for joining me again um, don't forget the there's shopping lists with um, the Great Australian Craft Show and don't forget if you've got any questions please feel free to ask I will see you all tomorrow Bye.